In this video, I'm going to show you creating realistic drones in Reaper. So a project set up here, and I want to add some drums to it. I have a bass and a couple of guitars, and I've already set up a track with some drum software on it. As we can see right here, I'm using the free version of the Steven Slate plugin, which sounds like this. Of course, everything we do in this video will apply to just about any drum software. I just chose this one because it's free, making it easier to follow along. I should mention that I'm treating the drums in a special way. I went to the mixer and I sent out each set of drums to a different output. As we can see over here, I have my kick, my snare, my overheads, and my rooms all sent to different tracks with the drum software on this track that we're going to use for MIDI. And I treated them differently on the kick. I have a compressor on the snare. I have a compressor and an EQ. On the overheads, I just have an EQ. And the room mics, I'm using a very aggressive compressor, making the room mics stand out and making the drums sound very roomy or very live, as we can hear. So with my drum track in record, we can see the input is set up to be MIDI. Now I'm using my MIDI controller, which will show up down over here. And I'm also going to use the record mode, record MIDI overdub right here, which will allow us to record multiple passes without erasing the previous passes. Then I'm going to create a MIDI item, control on the PC, command on the Mac, like this, and draw it for the section I want to record into, which will make it easier to see the MIDI editor while I'm recording the parts. So we double click it to open it up. We can see it looks like this with name notes on the side for each one of the drums we're going to use. And as you can tell, I have a bunch of snare drums and a bunch of hi-hats, as I'm going to record multiple instruments for the same part to make it sound more realistic using different samples for each. So the snare and the hi-hats will sound more realistic, as we're not just using one sample or one key to trigger those sounds. That's a huge part of making the drums sound more realistic. It's also easier to play fast notes with two different keys. So let's reopen the keyboard down here so you can see what notes I'm playing. I'm going to start off with the kick, snare, and four tom, which will be triggered with these keys. For kick, I'm just going to use one key, but for the snare, I'm going to use three. This one, this one, and this one, which is more of a rim shot. Then for the four tom, I'm just going to use this one, which I'm just using for builds with the snare. And I also want to quantize on the way in in a different way for each instrument I'm recording. So I'm going to go up here to actions, show action list. I'm going to type into the filter input quantize selected. We can choose the input quantize we're going to use. We'll first turn it on right here, and then we'll choose 16th notes. Is that's what I'm going to play for my kick and snare. So we'll close this and reopen the MIDI editor so you can see what notes I'm playing in real time. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to record ghost notes on this pass. I'm going to keep it simple and add ghost notes later, where we can turn off the quantize and give it a more realistic feel. But for the basic kick and snare part, I'm going to quantize it completely and play a very simple part along with the track. I'm going to see it down here, which notes I trigger. So let's start with the kick and snare.
Like I said, the part, isn't that interesting? This is just the basic kick and snare part. We're going to add some ghost notes later and a more nuanced hi-hat part to make it all sound more realistic. So now I'm going to put down some crashes. Now the reason I do the crashes next is because when I put down the hi-hat and the ride, we're going to leave spaces for the crashes. Because typically, drummers don't hit crashes and hi-hat on the same beat. They stop the hi-hat to play the crashes. So we'll start with that and build the hi-hat and ride around it. Again, it's a very simple part, and I'm just going to use three samples. A left crash over here, a right crash, and a china over here. Now I'm going to go back to the actions, still enable the quantize, but switch it to eighth notes, as I'm only playing an eighth note part for the crashes. Let's give it a shot. Again, we kept it very simple, as it'll get more complicated in a bit. Next, I want to put down some hi-hats. And as we can see over here, I'm using multiple hi-hats in the part. I have a closed hat, three medium hats, and an open hat. To make the part sound more realistic. And I'm going to add some ghost notes later, not on this pass, so I'm going to quantize this pass for now and keep it a bit more simple. Go to our quantize, make sure we turn it on. And for this, I'm going to play some 30 second notes. So I'll choose this to quantize on the way in. Let's try recording those hi-hats. At this point, I switch to the ride, so we don't need to record anymore. But let's switch to the ghost notes on the hi-hat, which we're not going to have to quantize. And we're just doing it on the closed hats in a few different areas. But notice, on this pass, we alternated each hi-hat on each hit to make it sound more realistic, as different samples for the hi-hat are being triggered alternately. But let's try recording just the ghost notes, but turn off the input quantize. Disable it right here. And let's record just the ghost notes of the hi-hat. I just put it in these two spots just to add some syncopation with softer hit ghost notes. Now let's add in the ride, which is going to be triggered right here. And also the bell, which will play over here. Well, let's quantize this part, turn it on, and set it to 16th notes. And now to record the bell part. 
And notice I'm going to alternate between the bell and the ride consistently. Sounding good. Now, finally, I want to record some ghost notes on the snare. And there's going to be a lot of them. But I don't want to quantize this because I want it to sound more human, as it'll mostly sound in time as everything else is quantized. So we'll disable the quantize. And again, we're playing the snare with these three samples. But notice, I'm going to try to play them a bit softer and very syncopated along with the more quantized part on the twos and fours. Let's give it a shot and pay attention to what notes I'm triggering over here. But to make the ghost notes easier to hear, let's turn off the instruments right here so we'll just hear the drums. I think that sounds more natural, but let's hear it with the guitars. Notice how the ghost notes really make it sound more realistic as I played a bit softer and much more syncopated, leading in to the next downbeat. Now dealing with the dynamics or the velocity of the part is pretty important, so I like to take the time to retweak it as necessary. And we can see the velocities right here, and I'm going to zoom in to the section with this build. I think that build is too strong. So I'm gonna hold down control on the PC, command on the Mac, and start a bit lower, and drag it in so it fades in slower. Before. And after. And we'll do the same thing to this one. Control, drag it up. We can do the same thing to this one. Let's hear it. But I kind of like it being harder. So let's keep it there. Notice how we alternated the snare samples to make it sound more realistic, as different snares are being hit on that fill. So like I said, I like to go back and double check all the velocities to make sure the nuance sounds good. So let's hear it back one more time, double checking 
on these builds we adjusted. I think that sounds pretty good. Very realistic for software based drums. So that's pretty much it. That's creating realistic drums in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.